So I'm starting today's lesson with some questions that you should already be able to answer about uniform circular motion. So with your groups uh, on your drive boards, I want you to answer the questions that I've got on the board. So we're looking at a satellite revolving around its planet at a constant speed in a circular orbit. So first, I've shown four positions uh, in the orbit, and I want you to mark their vectors for the net force on the satellite and call those vectors F. And then also, at the same po four points, draw vectors representing the direction of the velocities. Well, not just the directions, but you can represent the magnitude too, because you do know something about the magnitudes at the four positions for both the forces and the velocities. Okay, you got that? So now I'll ask some more questions. So C, are all of the force vectors the same magnitude, or are they different? Are all velocity vectors the same magnitude, or are they different? What's the angle between force and velocity? Remember, this is uniform circular motion. The scenario is something we haven't worked at before. Planets revol uh, satellites revolving around planets. But the idea, the mechanics is the same. It's uniform circular motion. Is there any component of force that is parallel to the velocity? And is kinetic energy varying or constant? So I'll give you some time to answer all of those questions. You might have to knock some of the rust off the gears, dust off the brain a little bit, because it's been a while since we've done uniform circular motion. But the ideas are there, and you should be able to call them up. Okay. So does anyone want to draw for us the uh, uh, draw draw for us? what the force vectors look like and what the velocity vectors look like? That's right. In uniform circular motion, the force, like the acceleration, is always directly inward, pointing directly, radially, in, radially inward, pointing right at the center of the circle. The velocities are tangential. In uniform circular motion, the acceleration has a constant magnitude, Direction is not constant, the magnitude is, is constant. The velocity um, does not have a constant value. Well, in the sense the velocity is not constant, but its magnitude is always constant. The speed is always constant in uniform circular motion. So the force vector should all be the same magnitude, and the velocity vector should all be the same magnitude. The angle between them, well, since the forces are always pointing directly radial inward, and the velocities are tangential, then the angle should always be 90 degrees. So there is no component, no overlap, no dot product, between, or not no dot product, but zero dot product, between the force vector and the velocity vector. So what about the kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is related to the speed. So to change the kinetic energy, you'd have to change the speed. The speed doesn't change, therefore the kinetic energy is obviously not going to change either. So today I'm going to introduce a new force, or at least I'm going to tell you about the force we've heard about it, but to tell you how it uh, functions. This is the force of gravity. I'll give you a little background first. Well, the reason that we're learning it in this class is gravity is one of the fundamental forces of nature, so it's really something you should know about. A little bit of historical background. In ancient times, and up to, uh, up to modern times, the earth and the heavens were thought to be fundamentally different in composition and behavior. We've seen that on earth, when you drop something, it just falls down to the ground. In the heavens, we, the ancients saw, and we can see ourselves, that the stars move in perfect circles around the earth. Then there are some things, the planets and the moon and the sun, that don't move in perfect circles, um, that move a little bit <clears throat> differently from the stars. But they're still different. They're not falling down to the ground. So earthly objects fall down to the ground, seek a lowly position, unless they're fire or air, in which case they go up. 
the celestial objects moved in perfect circles except for those weird planets. So it was thought that different mechanical rules govern the motion of earthly things, material things that we can see, and the heavens. But Isaac Newton, the story about the apple, it's not that he discovered gravity, that nobody knew that gravity exists. People knew that things fell down to the ground. Newton's insight was that gravity applies to the heavenly things as well as the earthly things. That the force that keeps the moon around the earth is the same as the force that pulls the apple to the ground. It's gravity. It follows the same rules here and everywhere. So we'll tell you what those rules are and give you a feeling for how that works in today's lesson. So I'll start off with a poll question. So get out your cell phones or your clickers or whatever it is that you use here. So I want you to pick one of these choices. I ask you, which is the greatest? Is the pull of the gravity from the Earth on the Moon the greatest? Or the pull of the gravity from the Moon on the Earth greater? Or do both forces have the same magnitude, the same strength? Or do you need to know more to be able to answer that question? Because we're asking about a force that we haven't told you about, gravity. How does that work? So I'll give you a few minutes to answer, give you a few seconds to answer that question. Okay, we've got a lot of answers that you don't know, because we haven't, fairly fair enough, we haven't told you about gravity. Some say that the Earth pulls the Moon more strongly. Nobody said that the Moon pulled the Earth more strongly, and a few said it was the same. That's what you all should have said. 